strong communication skills and building trusted relationships leads to an executive's ability to counsel CEOs and to counsel clients. Because we're very positive about everything and we're passionate about the technology, sometimes we can seem too rah-rah. Yeah. And the executives can discount you because, oh, that's Jessica, she's being the cheerleader, the cheerleader, right? And that's kind of damning with faint praise in a way because you want to be optimistic and upbeat, but you want them to pay attention to what it is you're counseling them on. So then, on the other hand, if you're constantly seeing disaster around every bend and trying to caution them, sometimes you can be considered too much of a Cassandra, mm -hmm. right? And then all of a sudden, if you're, if you're really persistent about your counseling, then you're shrill. When you start to look at the people who are going to move up, they share some things in common and that is they are really good counselors to clients. Mm -hmm. um, they are good advisors. They have the confidence, the temperament, um, and the expertise to go in and tell a CEO with confidence what you, know, what you think they should do. Um, and that's, that's, that can be tough for a lot of people. Um, so that's what we're looking for at the mid-level. Who's got that glimmer of um, you know, both the strategic thinking and the high-level ability to counsel clients? The higher you go, the more important it is to be able to prioritize for your team what's important. And I'm sure this happens on the agency side. It's been a while for me, but in our company, you know, you know that old adage, if, um, if all you have is a hammer, every problem is a nail? Well, every flipping person in our company thinks that we need to do a press release on their special interest group, right? And, um, and that's the only form of communication oh, yeah, that counts. Oh, yeah. Only thing that if they you try and do any, anything else. No, web doesn't matter. I'm being dissed, direct and mail I, and doesn't I want matter. my damn press release, right? Absolutely. And it is ridiculous. And then there's then you get into the executives vying over who gets quoted, and then the most political part of my job, the hardest part of my job, you're, you're going to laugh, is the management team page on the website. <laughs> who gets to stand where? You know, who's wearing a tie and who's not? And how come you didn't tell me to wear a tie? And how come his foot's before mine? And of course, they don't tell me this in a group, right? It, they all come to me individually later, and it's just like you know, give it a rest. So. Um, so the whole prioritization thing is so, so important. And we've just drilled into the team you know, to say, look, now press release is probably not the right thing, and here's why. But what we can do is this or that. Or you know what? We're not doing anything. Because early in my career, I got pushed into, you will remember this, a, doing a press release on uh, opening a Minneapolis office. And our founder was so proud of the fact that we had opened an office in Minneapolis that he said, we should do a press release. And I said, well, you know what we really should do is talk about international expansion, because we had expanded in Italy, and we had expanded in other parts of the US, and we had expanded in Asia. And he's like, no, no, no. We should do a press release on every location. And despite my better judgment, I did it. So I did a Minneapolis press release. Come to find out, it was one dude in an apartment who was a sales rep, OK? So my name went on the business wire with this Minneapolis press release. Luckily, it was more than 10 years ago, it was shortly after I joined the company. And we were the laughing stock of the financial analyst community. And we, I was in a meeting with this founder, Denis. I loved the guy. He was so passionate. And, um, and a financial analyst who tracked our stock. And the guy was from Minneapolis. And he goes, you guys, like, what's up with the Minneapolis release? I'm from there. It's a cool place and all. But did that really deserve a whole press release? Like, all you said was you opened an office. And I was just like, mm hmm <laughs> And God bless the founders. He said, look, that was my idea. We did it because I was proud of you know, opening the office, et cetera, et cetera. But, so we have a rule, no Minneapolis press releases <laughs> whatsoever. And you know, the team knows that they are empowered to push back on all these special interest groups to say, you know, no, the press release is not the right vehicle. There's no news here. It's not meeting the, you know, the where's the beef test. So, you know, let's talk about when you're going to have the beef or is there another way to communicate. So that whole, and that requires all sorts of skills, massive, massive diplomacy. I mean, I'm talking massive. Listening and then privately telling that new VP, you know what, 
we're not going to do that. But what we are going to do is this and this and this. And how does how do you feel about that? Um, and you know, I don't. And, it, and we have the reputation in the company being valued by the senior management that if we say it's not worthy, no one's going to make us do it. Mm -hmm.